Welcome to this Wise Owl Report Builder tutorial. In this video, we'll explain how you can calculate the percentage of row and column totals in a matrix. We'll start with a very quick recap of creating a basic matrix, including how to add row and column totals. And then we'll talk a little bit about the scope of the sum function and why it calculates different values depending on its location in a matrix. We'll then manipulate the scope of the function to calculate the percentage of row totals, column totals, and the overall table total. The final part of the video explains how you can show both the percentage of the total and the value in the same cell in the matrix. So let's get started. Here's an example of the type of thing we'll create in this video. We'll start with a simple matrix which shows the total runtime in minutes for films grouped by which genre they belong to and which certificate was awarded to them. Once we've done this using a basic sum function, we'll change it so that we can see the contribution that each of these values makes to the total for the row, so the matrix will end up looking like this. Once we've shown the, the contribution to the row totals, we can also do the same thing to show the contribution to the column totals. We can then move on and show the contribution to the overall grand total for the entire matrix. And then we could even combine a couple of those values to show the contribution to the grand total as well as the actual value in runtime minutes. It's a bit messy looking, but just out of interest. If you want to follow along, you'll need a copy of the Wise Owl Movies database. And if you don't already have it set up, you can use this video, which will help you get it installed. There's a link in that video's description you can use to download any files you'll need. Assuming you have done that, I'm going to head over to Report Builder, where I've got a blank report waiting for me and I can right click on my data sources folder and choose add data source. I'll change its name so that it's called movies, choose to use an embedded connection pointing to a Microsoft SQL server, then click the build button to get a bit of help with the connection string. I'll type in a shortcut to my local host, so dot backslash SQL 2017, which is the name of the instance of SQL server I'm connecting to. Then I can click on the drop down list towards the bottom of the dialog box, choose movies, and then click OK a couple of times to create my data source. Next, I can create my data set. So I can right click on the movies data source and choose add data set. I'll call this one films, and then I'll click the query designer button to help me build it. I'll expand the tables folder and then select both columns from the certificate table. So I'll just tick the box next to certificate. From the film table, I'm going to select just the runtime in minutes and then both columns from the genre table by ticking the box next to the table name. Having done that, I can click OK. And when my select statement has been generated, I can click OK again. And there's my basic data set created. Next, we can create a basic matrix to display the total runtime for each combination of genre and certificate. I'll start by getting rid of my placeholder title text box and then right click into the page footer and choose to remove that. I can then right click into the body of the report and choose insert matrix. For the rows area, I want to group by the genre ID, but I want to display and sort by the genre name so that I have less to change. I'm going to select the genre field first. And then for the group that's been created, I can right click on it in the groups panel choose group properties and then change the group on so that it's set to genre ID. The sorting and the display value won't be affected. For the columns area, I'd like to group on and sort by the certificate ID, but display the certificate. So the shortest route to that in this example is to select the certificate ID first to create the grouping and the default sorting and then change that to the certificate. So that changes what gets displayed. For the data cell, I'd like to display the sum of runtime in minutes. So I can simply select runtime minutes and that will provide me with a sum automatically. I'll just change the font formatting. You'll find uh, probably if you run the report at this point, it won't necessarily display all the values in the table. In fact, I'm only seeing values for romantic comedy and um, possibly the worst of the genres. Um, oh no, actually, sorry, awful is the worst of the genres. Um, so let's just make sure that all the text gets displayed in the matrix. If I highlight all the cells in it, change the default font to any other font and then just back to the default. That's usually enough to sort that out. So there we go. There's all the genres displayed now. I'll just do some other basic formatting to highlight the headers for the rows and the columns. So back to the design view, just change the column width there as well. So everything appears on one single line as well. I'll select the two cells in the in the header 
row and then change the formatting of that uh, background color and font color and then for the um, for the row headers I'll change that so that it's set to a different color and make that bold as well okay so having done that a quick run of the report there's my basic matrix setup Next, I'd like to add some row and column totals so that we can see what we're calculating the contribution of. Doing that's fairly straightforward in a matrix. If I head back to the design view, I can simply right click on my detail cell, my data cell, and then choose add total. I'll go for a row first, which will give me a grand total row. And then if I right click on the same cell again and choose add total column, that will give me a total for each genre. It would be nice if it had automatically added a total for the entire matrix. It hasn't, but it's fairly simple to create one. In that bottom right hand corner cell, I can simply use the field selector to pick the runtime minutes field again. I'll just change the formatting of those three cells. Uh, I'll change them to bold and maybe change the background color as well to make them stand out a little bit. And then if we run the, run the report again, we'll see the other uh, grand totals displayed for us. The next thing I'd like to do is calculate the contribution that each of these cells makes to the total for the row to which it belongs. And that's going to involve some careful manipulation of the scope over which the sum function operates. We haven't specified a scope for any of the four functions we've added to the design view of our matrix yet. So we've added the sum function in four separate places, and yet it's calculating a different result each time based on the location of it in the matrix. So in the bottom right hand corner cell here, you can see that it doesn't belong to any column group. So it's outside of the round brackets for the column group icon, nor is it in a row group. It's outside of the bracket symbol for the row groups. So the scope for that sum function is for the entire table. So it calculates the total runtime for every single row that that table or that matrix contains. For the one that's at the bottom of the certificate column, that's calculating the sum for each individual certificate. The one that's at the right hand side of the genre row calculates the sum for the entire genre. And the one that's sitting right in the middle there calculates the sum for films in a particular genre and a particular certificate. So to manipulate that, um, let's make a copy of this matrix. I'm just going to change the width of these columns a little bit so I've got a bit of space to lay these out side by side. And then I'm going to make a copy of this matrix by dragging a rectangle around it first and then pressing Ctrl and C to copy. Then I can press Ctrl and V to paste it and then drag that copy across to the right hand side. To make this work then, each value in the data cell needs to be able to reference the total for the row to which it belongs. Let's just have a look at how we can do that part first. I'm going to right click on the data cell in the middle of this copy of the matrix and choose expression. And here we can see how the sum function is being generated or how the sum result is being generated. It's simply a sum function which references the value of the field we want to calculate the total of. So when you write a sum function like this, it will use its default or current scope. And of course, the default or current scope for a data cell is the data cell. So it's each combination of genre and certificate. I want to influence that. I want to modify it so that it calculates the sum for every row in the genre group. To do that, I can set the value of the second optional parameter of the sum function. It isn't immediately obvious from here that there is a second parameter of the sum function, but if I head down to the common functions category and choose aggregate, then you'll see that there is a, an option for sum. And in the little examples in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the second example shows you that you can specify the name of a data region or a scope. So what I'm going to do is refer to the name of the genre group, which in this copy of the matrix is called genre two. You can see that just down there in the bottom left hand corner. So just inside the closed round brackets, if I typed in a comma and then in some double quotes, the name of the group, which is genre two, the entire expression should now look like so. Having done that, I can click OK. And then if I run the report now, what we'll see is that each detail cell simply shows me the grand total for the row to which it belongs. So now that I've got both values available to me, I can divide one by the other to get the percentage contribution. Let's head back to the design view. I can right click on that expression cell and choose expression to get back to the expression builder. 
and then just after the equal sign, I'm going to type in sum, open some round brackets, head to my fields list and double click the runtime minutes field and then close the round brackets. So that's back to the original expression we just had, the one that shows you the, the, the value for the combination of genre and certificate. I'm then simply going to divide that by the total for the row or for the genre 2 group. So the entire expression should now look like so. Now that we've done that, we can click OK. It's probably worthwhile formatting this before we run it, um, just to avoid any, uh, any weird looking results. I'm going to apply the percentage formatting to that cell and then add a couple of decimal places. And then if I run the report, there we go. There's our um, contribution for each um, for each cell to the row total. If it's not immediately obvious that it's working correctly, you could do some quick mental arithmetic or even some actual physical arithmetic with a calculator. But looking at the uh, the values from these, these seem to match the values for the uh, for the percentages. One thing that's a little annoying about this copy of the matrix is that it displays a result in the cell, even if there's no actual value there in, in the original matrix. So in the database, there are no action movies with a U certificate assigned to them. And yet in this copy of the matrix, we're displaying the value 0.00%. I'd like to get rid of that. I, I, we can do that fairly easily using an if function to establish whether the sum of runtime minutes is nothing. If so, display an empty cell otherwise perform the calculation we've just performed. So back into the design view, we can then right click on the expression cell in the second matrix and choose expression. We can then add an if function to the beginning of the current calculation. So if we head to the common functions category, you'll find the if function in the program flow category. So if I click just after the equal sign, I can then double click the if function to insert that. I then want to check if the sum of runtime minutes is nothing. And I can do that in a couple of different ways. You may have seen this in a previous video. One way to do it is to use the function in the inspection category called is nothing. So I can double click the is nothing function. Then I want to check the sum of runtime minutes, or I could even just refer to the runtime minutes field. That would be acceptable here as well. So in fact, for simplicity, let's head to the fields list and we'll double click the runtime minutes field and then just close the round brackets for the is nothing function. I'm then going to type in a comma. And after that, I'm going to type in the word nothing. So nothing is the equivalent of null in, uh, in Visual Basic in Report Builder. So that will make sure that the cell is empty, then another comma, and then my sum, um, sum of the runtime minutes divided by the sum for the genre. I'll need to close an extra set of round brackets at the end of that expression for the if function. And then just to tidy things up a little bit and make it hopefully somewhat more readable, I'm going to take each of the arguments I've specified and put those onto separate lines, typing in a few spaces in front of each one to change the layout slightly. So that hopefully makes things a little easier to read. So if the runtime minutes is nothing, then put nothing in the cell. Otherwise, perform the calculation we've already performed. Now that I've done that, I can click OK and then run the report again. And this time, I think things are a little bit neater. We've got these empty cells where there are no values representing that combination of certificate and genre. If we want to change the matrix to show the contribution to the column total rather than the row total, well, that's nice and simple. We can just alter the name of the scope we're calculating the sum of. So let's head back to the design view and then I can right click onto the expression cell and choose expression. I'll just move the dialog box out of the way a little bit so that we can see the name of the column group is called certificate ID 2. So here where we've previously specified genre 2, I'll replace that with certificate ID 2. Be careful with the spelling, it's case sensitive this by the way, so the names of, of scopes that you enter are case sensitive, so do be slightly careful when you type this in. And then if I click OK and then run the report, we'll see this time we're now calculating the contribution to the column total rather than the row total. Changing the calculation to show us the percentage contribution to the grand total for the entire matrix is equally simple, providing we know the name of the matrix. 
So let's head back to the design view. There are a couple of different ways to find this out. If I click into a single cell in the second matrix, I can right click on one of the gray boxes around the outside and choose Tablix properties. The name of the matrix will be displayed in the name property on the general page of the dialog box. So this one's called Tablix2. You can change that if you like. If you wanted to make it more descriptive, you can just type in a new name there. An alternative place to find that would be in the properties window. So if I head to the view tab in the ribbon and tick the box next to the properties window, when I have that matrix selected, it will show me its name at the top of the properties window. And I can also find the name property a little further down the, the window and modify that there again if I wanted to. But I'm happy with it being called Tablex too. I'm just going to take the opportunity to copy that to the clipboard so that I don't have to type it in in a moment. And then if I right click into that cell and choose expression, I can replace certificate ID 2 with Tablex 2. Click OK. Back to the home tab and run the report. And now it's showing me the contribution of each value to the grand total for the entire matrix. For the final example, it might be nice to be able to show both the percentage contribution and the actual value of the sum of runtime minutes in the same cell. A little like the example I showed you at the start of the video, uh, like this one, so both values in the same cell. Doing that requires extending the calculation a little bit to concatenate some values together. Um, not too difficult, but a couple of things to watch out for. So let's head back to the design view of our report. And I'm going to right click into the expression box and choose to launch the expression builder. I want to add some extra information after the result of the sum of runtime divided by the sum of runtime for the entire table. So where those double closed round brackets are at the end, I'm going to click just inside there and then take the final closed round bracket down a couple of lines. That's the closed round bracket which corresponds to the open round bracket for the if function. Then on this blank line, I'm going to give myself a few spaces and then begin concatenating the extra values I want to display. So I can type in an ampersand and then in some double quotes, a space and an open round bracket and then close the double quotes and then another ampersand. And then I want the value for the sum of runtime minutes. So I want to copy and paste that rather than create it again manually. And then another ampersand and then a literal closed round bracket symbol. If you're not quite sure what's going on here, we do have a separate video which explains how to work with strings and concatenating things. So it might be worthwhile hunting that one down in the same playlist. But, uh, but basically we're just adding on some literal characters, a literal space and an open round bracket symbol after the result of this calculation. And then the result of the sum function and then another literal closed round bracket symbol. So it's a little unwieldy at this point. And if I click OK, there's one of the slightly annoying effect as well. If I click the run button to see results, um, you might be able to make out that we have indeed added in the sum of runtime minutes in a set of round brackets at the end of each expression. But annoyingly, it's now ignoring our percentage formatting for the cell. Um, that's simply because the result of this cell now isn't technically a number any longer. It's a string of text. It's a bunch of different bits of text all concatenated together to form a larger thing. And I can't simply apply a basic number format to the cell to make that work. So what we'll do instead is we'll take the result of our sum divided by the sum for the table and pass that into the format function to recreate the percentage formatting. Back to the design view, it involves creating an even longer expression now. So let's right click into that text box and choose expression. I want to take the result of that calculation there and format it as a percentage. There's a couple of different ways of doing that. If I click just before that expression, I head to the common functions folder and then go for the text category you'll find that there's a bunch of functions for formatting things. And there's one called format percent. And that's the one that we're going to use. Um, it's got two, um, two parameters. It's the value you want to apply the percent format to, and then the number of decimal places you want to apply. So I'm going to double click the format percent function that will insert its name and open up the round brackets. The thing that I want to format is that entire calculation here. 
So just at the end of that calculation, I can type in a comma and then enter the number of decimal places I want to use, which will be two, and then close the round brackets for the format percent function. OK, having done that, I can first of all zoom in so you can hopefully see the entire thing a little more clearly if you wanted to replicate that. And then if we click OK and run the report one more time, hopefully things will look a little neater. Maybe a little slightly wider column as well to read everything on a single line. Let's just change that column width so it's readable all in one single line. There we go. That's a little bit nicer. A little more awkward to read, of course, but it, um, it works. So there we go. Some basic techniques for manipulating the scope of the sum function to calculate percentage of row and percentage of column totals in a matrix. Hope you found that one interesting um, and the techniques useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.